everybody, I'm Anna, I'm one of the two mythical. You done? Thank you then. Hi everybody, I'm Anna, I'm one of the two mythical unicorns. Welcome to our channel. And today I will be talking about The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. And this is by a Japanese author. Um, I've never read anything, any books by a Japanese author. I've read some manga, but not a book. So I was really excited about this one. It was originally published in 2012 in Japanese. Uh, and then in 2017, I believe, it was published in English and then I found it here in Sweden in 2018. So I was really excited about this book. Uh, the Japanese, they, they don't mind taking a bit of a detour or stopping to smell the flowers, just watch the scenery. I felt that this was really good for me to read uh, since January has been a bit hectic. <laughs> so the book is about Nana and Nana is a cat. It's a male cat even. Uh, but he is called Nana because of his tail. He has a crooked tail like the number seven and Japanese translations. And he lives on the streets, he's a stray, but he has found a particular car that he likes, a silver colored, I guess, <laughs> car that he likes to lay on when it's sunny and just get a bit of warmth. And then this guy shows up, sees him and starts to give him food, which Nana really likes, but he's not dependent, he's, he's cool, he's free. And then one day Nana is hit by a car and is badly hurt and decides to go to the silver van to see if he can get any help. And the guy who is called Saturo, he, he helps Nana because he likes cat, he feels bad for Nana, he's an animal lover. Nana thinks that that is not anything like normal people do, help injured animals. But I like to believe that we're better than that. If we find an injured animal, we will help. I hope. Nana is injured, he goes to the vet, and after that he still needs some help. He's not recovered. I think he needs some surgery and stuff, so... He, he needs some help and Satoru takes care of him, feeds him and all that, and after about three months Nana is ready to go out in the world again, but Satoru is not that happy about that. He loves Nana and he wants Nana to stay, so Nana decides that I guess it's alright, you help me, you give me food, just take me on box sometimes. And that is how their life proceeds, and they're quite happy, and then one day Satoru says that they're gonna go on a little journey. and. That he probably can't keep Nana and he's gonna try to find Nana a different home. And they embark on this journey together, trying to figure life out. And Nana really just wants to stay by Satoru's side. So that is what the book is about. It is mostly written from Nana's perspective. Uh, we get some flashbacks and some stuffs that well, just feel like normal reading, but a lot of it is written from Nana's perspective, which is really fun to read. I've not read that many cat books. It, I think it was really good. And as I said, the Japanese, they tend to shake it a bit slower. Not that it gets boring, but just, they don't mind taking a detour and just stopping to smell the flowers or just look at the scenery. And I thought that was really nice. It was a good change of pace. Uh, I, I mostly just read fantasy, <laughs> but I decided to go out of my comfort zone, try to find something else. Uh, and this is what I went for and I'm really happy about it. I would really recommend this. I was a bit iffy about it at first, but 
yeah, I, I really liked it. So, yeah, let's go into some spoilers. The book, as I said, I was a little bit, maybe not iffy, but yeah, I was a bit hesitant. And yeah, it was a good book and it was going along fine, but I didn't really, like, you know, get really into it. And then it grew on me gradually and I didn't really notice until I was sobbing like a child in the couch because the thing is that Satoru he's going to his different friends he goes to three different friends and try to give Nana away and he doesn't tell Nana why but we get hints throughout why he he wants to give Nana away and find Nana a new home which turns out to be cancer and that Satoru is not expected to survive which is really sad and that is when I started crying when I realized that Nana was gonna be left behind and Nana really didn't wanna be left behind at every friend they visited he did something to make sure that Satoru wouldn't leave him there because Satoru was really set on that Nana is going to have a good home or otherwise he's not staying. So Nana did different things, started fights just to make sure that he could continue going with Satoru. And all of this, it was interesting because we got uh, flashbacks and got to know what had happened to Satoru earlier and how he grew up through these different friends because he had moved around a lot. So. There, were his, there was his friends from, yeah, I don't know how old, but like when he was in middle school and then junior high and then high school and university as well. So we got to know different parts of the tour and how he got through life. And then the last part is more present time and we get to see through Nana's eyes how Saturo gets sicker and weaker and he goes to the hospital and Nana doesn't understand and it's really sad and the worst part for me that really got me was when Satoru left for the hospital for the last time he put Nana in the cage and then put the cage to the wall so that Nana couldn't get out and then he left and Nana just like kind of screamed and that was hard <laughs> that was really heavy and that is when I cried like a child in the couch yeah <laughs> that, that was really hard to read but then because he he goes to live with his aunt who kind of raised him after his parents died and she continues to take care of Nana and she takes Nana to the hospital to visit Satoru a few times and then Nana, he, he runs away because he doesn't want to go with the aunt and he just wants to stay with Satoru. So he just stays around the hospital to get as close to Satoru as possible. And it's also sad and heartbreaking. And then Satoru is about to die and the aunt goes to get Nana and brings him into the hospital and it's really really horrible and really really sad but they they get to say a final goodbye and that is so horrible and then Nana he continues living with the aunt and the aunt kind of gets more friendly towards cats and ends up adopting another cat and we get to see how he he, as in Nana, gets to meet all the friends once again and they talk and how they didn't notice that Satoru was ill and it's, it's a lot of stuff happening in a very short time and it was really heavy and from the beginning of the book I did not expect that but I really liked the ending because in the end Nana has this dream or several dreams about Satoru and that Satoru is kind of waiting for him and I really like the thought that when Nana 
died and moved on, he would go back to Saturo. Which is how I would say that it ends. <laughs> it's not really <laughs> crystal clear <laughs> since we don't know what happens after death, but that is the way I choose to end this book. <laughs> but yeah, that was really a twist that I wasn't prepared for. And, and I was sobbing like an idiot uh, when he left for the hospital and put Nana in the cage towards the wall. And then I got a bit back and I recovered and I continued reading. And then he died and then I started sobbing again like an idiot. Just tears and snot everywhere. My mascara was all over the place. And then then he was dead and it was the funeral and I recovered a little bit, still sniffing a bit, but kind of recovered. But then then, then the whole part of the dreaming about Satoru came and I was crying again. It was a lot of crying and I don't, I don't know where it came from. I wasn't prepared because throughout the book it was like, yeah, but this is nice and just going along fine like when you you know when you want a book that just is easy to read and just wants want you to, to smile and then i was just crying but it was so good and so sad and i'm okay with it being sad for once i'm kind of over the whole killing characters off but for this one it, i was fine with it I was fine with the ending and the kind of reunion in death. <laughs> but yeah, it was really good and it was really pretty. And and I mean, look here. I hope you can see it. It is really pretty and it's both back and front. And And I read somewhere that there are pictures in the book as well. Small, small pictures for each chapter or part of the book and it says that yeah the cat doesn't look like Nana but that they found this artist's work somewhere in China or something and that they really liked it so they decided to go with that rather than just recreating Nana for some reason and and it is a little bit shiny, like in the leaves. I don't know if you can see that. And there are small birds. It's it's such a pretty book. So simple. And yeah. And it says on the back, above all, it shows how acts of love, both great and small, can transform our lives. And that's that's really true. It's it's so good. <laughs> it kind of sets a different tone to life compared to all the things that I normally read. So yeah, in conclusion, even though I cried like a child, it was really good and I would recommend it to, yeah, any adult that would like to read something. It's really easy to read and it's not that long, so anyone would be able to read it that knows how to read. I'm gonna stop rambling. Uh, that was it. Thank you for watching this. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, do that. And until next time, bye. And I don't know if you can hear the crunching, but that is my cat eating. Because <laughs> apparently she wants to make it known that she is here. Nana is not the most important cat in my life.